Number six, uh, Isaac, you come and lead us and do whatever the Lord says to do. a few minutes and recognize a few folks and we want to begin today with uh, with brother Lester and his beautiful bride I ask you guys to go ahead and stand I think well everybody most people here knows who you are but uh, I might have a few guests and it is awesome it says here you served from August 1970 until May of 1973 and uh, so we, uh, we're we awesome. You got any words of wisdom for us? Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, I know many people speak so highly of y'all. And uh, thank y'all for being here. Uh, did Lisa make it? Did well, I see Stephen. I said, Is Lisa, did Lisa make it? What Stephen got to do with it? <laughs> it's his son, I know it's her son-in-law, but uh, 
you throw me off there and I don't know what to, okay, Stephen, would you, <laughs> it's good to see you, brother, but uh, I, I, I didn't see her, so I didn't want to make sure I didn't overlook her, because uh, I have been known to do that, all right, uh, but in the bulletin there, you'll see uh, Lisa and, of course, her husband, Jeff, is here from June 4th, 2006 to October 2011. All right. Do we have any other esteemed guests that would that we want to recognize? Does anybody want to recognize their guest today? I know Glenn out there has got his grandson. If you'd like to, nobody else out here can see you. So they'll just have to take my word that you're here. But it's nice to have you all. I know that Janie is tickled to death. Uh, that her family is here and they do take up a whole row. <laughs> Anybody else? All right. Well, Janie, you come and uh, say what the Lord's put on your heart. Would you like for me to showcase? <laughs> Would you like this to come out so we can see what you're talking about? I'll, okay. I'll bring it out. Cue me. We started talking about homecoming, and every year Harry would get up and talk about the history of the church. And of course, Harry was here a lot longer than I was. I started when we got married in 1965, but he he loved the church. I think sometimes he loved the church a lot more than me because he spent a lot more time over here sometimes. <laughs> But as I look around the church, people said, well, how can you do that? But I see Harry all over the church. I mean, he's with the Lord, but I see so many things here. But I sat down in his recliner, and it was always his recliner. I didn't get to sit in it. And I found these things that Harry had worked up for this year's homecoming. And that's when I told Wade I'll present what Harry had. First of all, he wanted to talk about the windows. How many of you look at the windows and you don't know who they are? I'm doing that. I don't really recognize who those, some of those people are in the, <coughs> on the windows. <coughs> but in the early days, there was no money. Sometimes we still have no money. But anyway, the windows, I looked at Damon's father is back there in the corner, Damon Stanley's father. And I asked Damon this morning, I said, it's on the same level as when the World War II was. But Damon said that he, they thought his father had cancer, that he died as a young man. And then we have in the window right here, this is Jay Harve and wife Rebecca Ashley. And he was the great grandfather of one man here today, and that was Ed Reed, and he has a granddaughter here, great-granddaughter, Lynn Saunders. And then if you want to go further, he has a great-great-granddaughter, Joanne Ashley, and my two children, Sherry and Derek. So we've got, and then a great-great-great-Sarah my granddaughter. And she's great, 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 ain't she? And she's wonderful, yes. <laughs> but I just thought, you know, and we lost two, Harry and Joe, two of the grandsons. So then we have Robert Boyd, Robert Ashley and Nell Boyd Ashley, and Mary McCormick used to come to our church, and that was Mary's father. I never knew him. We also have... Reverend R.C. Ashley and wife, and he was the pastor here when the church was built. And I think they did this window in honor of him. There's other stuff besides just the windows. Uh, this pulpit was given by Vance and Mamie Ashley. She used to be your babysitter, didn't she, Aunt Mamie? The communion table here below was donated by Riley 
and Emma Turnmeyer. And see, these people, most of these people were all before my time when I started coming. <clears throat> the front doors are in memory of Paul Osborne by Mary Nell Osborne and her family. So that's not too long ago. There have been many monetary donations. Some people want it used for a certain thing and some don't. I think remembering, Harry didn't write this down, but I believe this Bible cost a dollar and 35 cents. <laughs> and I don't know, way back in the very beginning of the church. And that's something <clears throat> you don't seem to know about. Uh, he wrote some of the people that meant a lot to me and was deceased prior to this year. And he talked about his father. Now, his father was deaf. And back in the old days, they didn't say deaf. They said deaf and dumb. And they were considered sometimes. And Harry said that always bothered him. But we had some sign language classes here, and I learned to talk to him. I hope everything I said was all right. I wasn't sure sometimes he would correct me. But uh, anyway, I see him when I look around the church. I see him when I see these because he made these. And he made this. And he, he made me, uh, as Wade said out uh, uh, over here, is a, uh, just a stand. He made it so I could put my Bible or my hymn book on it when I was doing sign language for him. He did a lot of the things in the church. And because he was deaf, nobody really knew what he did. He, Harry put my mother married him, though he couldn't hear. But she made him sell his Harvey da that Harley Davidson with a side cart before she would marry him. <laughs> I didn't know that either. <clears throat> and then he mentioned here some of the older people at uh, Lester might remember Broke Reed, Roy Ashley, Laura Show, Wade Peeler, and Clifford Lindsay. And then he talked about Eva's husband, Gene Miller, was a deacon. And Eva, Josephine, and Betty's father, Arthur Childers, was also a, a good deacon. Uh, I appreciate all the donations that was given to the building fund in Harry's name. We, we so much appreciate them. But <clears throat> Eva got another thing in the mail. This is not for Harry. This was, it said this morning, I have a little trouble reading it. This money is in loving memory of my first Sunday school teacher, Laura Show, long before she was married to John T. Now, Aunt Lure was probably a teacher to my children and everybody. But now this, we're talking about years ago. Uh, this lady's 82, and she was her first Sunday school teacher. She said, I can still vividly remember her teachings and the paper with stickers pertaining to the story. Our little class was behind the pulpit area in the old white wooden church with the bell tower. And that was before my time, too. She was a just and humble lady, loved by all. I pray you choose to do something well with this. And she was the granddaughter of Quince and Bina Ashley, and her name was Barbara Sheet. And that, I don't know if anybody would remember her name. And then again, she, uh, she sent... We sent a thank you note, and Eva said she had sent money before. Oh, she sent money back in 2009 in memory of Aunt Laura. But like I said, when I look at these windows, I think of Harry, too, because I had to come over here and hold some of the stained glass that got broke out while he repaired the windows. And I know especially one or two here where the little boys next door throwed rocks and crack the windows. So I'm saying, but like I say, I can see Harry in church. So. Thank you.
Let's all stand again and turn to him number 499, Victory in Jesus.
Take your time fellowshipping. Take your time. Love on each other. Praise team, y'all make your way on up here. Now, David, I didn't plan this. Somebody else did. So whatever time you get, don't let that slow you down because it wouldn't be my fault. It would be their fault. So I, we're good. We're good. Not, we're good. Okay. You think by now? I just have to Where's Scott? Oh, there he is. Y'all come on up here. I'm, I'm killing time till y'all get up here. <laughs> All right, let's stand up. This is a great praise song. Uh, Isaac put this together. It's a little melody of some praise songs, and uh, it's awesome. You mic on? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We will make sure that mic's on. Let's stand up and say this praise song. They're going to leave us. <laughs>
Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way in me. Amen. Amen. All right, brother, you'll come and. Uh, Got some special music. Brother Nathan, if you'll come, appreciate you coming. I wish your wife could have come with you. She's always a blessing and and a sweet spirit. His wife has such a sweet spirit, and I appreciate that. But nothing, Brother Nathan's going to come bless us. Might be a few minutes yet, David, but that's all right. You'll have plenty time. That's right. That's why we started. I do count it an honor and a privilege to be here this morning. Uh, I'll try not to be up here and take up too awful much time, but nevertheless, I don't want to—I don't want to cut my time short without doing what I feel God wants me to do. Um, you know, as I as I go along and as as I live another day and you know another year, homecomings take on a little different meaning to me as they did. And before it was just a church service where you got to eat, and that is a lot of it. I'll agree with that. But whenever you you get saved and you start on your road towards heaven, you know there's going to be a homecoming one of these days. There's going to be one that that we'll all get to enjoy, and and it'll be unlike anything we've ever known. But you know, there is a sadness in thinking about that down here on earth. You know, we we look at that as all joy, but the only other the only thing I can think of that would be sad is if you don't know Jesus and you're not ready to go. But if let me just say this, if you feel that the Lord's dealing with your heart, it's not going to bother me a bit. If you come to this altar when I'm singing, Amen. or just whatever, you just let the Lord have His way. I, I don't know if I needed to really say that, but I, I tell you. It's, it's a joy to me to, and in what little bit that I can do for the Lord, I know I'm not anointed to preach or, or to teach God's word, but I, the Lord gives me songs and I, I write them down sometimes and, and sometimes the devil fights with me over them and tells me, oh, there won't nobody like that song. And sometimes it gets to me and you think, well, maybe I shouldn't sing that or, or whatever. But, you know, I learn a lot through that. I learned that that's exactly what the devil is. He'll try to discourage you from doing anything for the Lord, whether it's testifying or whether it's speaking to a co-worker, inviting somebody to church or whatever. But you just go ahead in the name of the Lord and serve God wherever you're at. I'm going to sing this one. It's about the testimony of the Sunday morning that I was saved. It's called I'm On My Way.
The altar call was given And the Lord spoke to me So I stepped out to Jesus And now I'm on my way Here's the latest one that I've, I've wrote down. and uh, I wrote this. I started writing it while I was at work one day. It was one, I think it was last Saturday, maybe. And, uh, you know, I've heard preachers preach on, on Facebook. I've heard them preach about Facebook. Let me say that. That it was just a place where evil was. Well, there's evil there. But you know, outside the doors of this church, even right here, I know the devil's working with people's minds. Every, everywhere you go, you can't get away from it. Everything's what you make of it, and including Facebook. You could post things that's praising God, and you can see things that aren't. But I put this song on Facebook just as soon as I could with my phone. And uh, I believe it's blessing people's hearts. I know it blessed mine to write it down, and I'm not saying that to praise myself because it's 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 not about me it's all about what jesus Amen. did for us Amen. it's all of us his song he could have stayed at home above, but the choice was made in love he took the nails that should have been for me
as can be. I should have been upon that tree. He took the nails and he set me free. And when I called upon his name, I was changed, never the same. He took the nails that would have condemned me. He took the nails meant for me. He took the nails on Calvary. I don't know why he ever loved me. And when I look upon the cross, I'm so ashamed at the cost. He took the nails that were meant for you. sins for God and gone. He took the nails and he made a place for me. And when I bow before my king, a brand new song the reading sing. He took the nails and he'll give a crown to me. He took the nails meant for me. He so ashamed at the cost. He took the nails that were meant for you and me. And when I look upon the cross, I'm so ashamed at the cost. He took the nails that were meant for you. this one. You may recognize it. Sing along if you want to, but you know, it's called, we call it New Birth. I guess that's the name of it. It was in an old song book that I had. I don't think it's a real old song, but it talks about having a birth you can't remember and then one you can't forget. To this old world, I just can't recall. I don't remember anything about my birth at all. And then one night, upon my knees, I never will forget. I had a birth I can't remember, and one I can't forget. It makes no difference, and some may even frown, but the angels rejoiced when my name was written down. So unworthy of such mercy, but still he paid my debt. I've had a birth I can't remember, then one I can't Into forgetfulness as far as east is from the west. I've had a birth I can't remember, then one I can't forget. Ah, oh, but to this world 
It makes no difference And some may even frown But the angels rejoiced When my name was written down So unworthy of God's mercy But still he paid my debt I had a birth I can't remember Then one I can't forget Yes, I had a birth I can't remember Then one I can't forget I'm going to sing one more and then I'll get on down out of the way um, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get that one. I'll be glad to. Um, I, I, I had this one on my heart, and then I'll get three little souls. Um, this, this one's called There'll Come a Day. I hope I remember how to play it. Let me just start playing. Sometimes I do that. I can't remember how to start something out. But you know, that's life. Doesn't matter how we started out, it's how we finish. I know you're lonesome And I know you're sad It seems like things Always turn out bad Sometimes all we have Is faith to lift us up Above the clouds Satan's chains that hold you down will have to give way. There'll come a day. There'll come a day. There was a day a man who knew no sin was sentenced to die to purify
think I can remember that song, Three Little Souls, but sometimes I, I get to thinking about my children and what Jesus has done for me, and sometimes I'll just forget where I'm at in the song. So I think I've got them in here, and I'll try to find them. But I, I've got a praise report when it comes to that song, Three Little Souls. When I wrote that down, that was surely the prayer for me and my children. You know, it not only is about praying for my children to be saved, it's also about praying to God that I would be the dad that, that I should be in front of them, that I would live my life accordingly, and that they might see Jesus in me. And um, I, I'm glad to say that, that since the writing of that song between then and now, um, all three of my children have came to me and their mother and told me that they have been saved. And that's, that's truly the greatest thing that I, the greatest thing as a parent, besides first becoming a parent, I mean, other than that, I mean, that's, that, that's greater than becoming a parent because, yeah. you know, you'll lose your kids if all you are is a parent. But you know, if your children know the Lord Jesus and you know Jesus too, then you will never lose them. You'll be with them forever. Well, I can't find the song, but I believe I remember it anyway. That ain't gonna stop me from trying. I was just using, I was trying to use you as a defense, but it didn't work out. All right. 
Uh, Nick, is the video ready? It is. All right. You got that light. Go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and hit all the lights. I don't think it's, yeah, that might help. All right, here's just a, a couple minutes. Let me add here that uh, uh, the three we lost, brother, we lost B brother Bill Hurley too. And uh, we didn't get pictures for, for Bill, so he's not on here. Uh, but we certainly do want to uh, remember him and, uh, <clears throat> and his family. We, we, we appreciated him. He is fun to be around, and I know the family misses him, and Sister Gail does, I know, and the kids, but he's a good man. But uh, uh, Brother Thurman and uh, Brother Harry, we got pictures for them, and so we got them up there. So uh, let's just enjoy this video just a few minutes. When we raise that up uh, for a guest, the three crosses that's up there, um, Harry secured the wood. He had to do a little horse trading, I believe, the way he explained it. Had to get something from some place, and somebody wanted it, and so uh, done a little horse trading, got got that wood, and Brother Thurman built those crosses. So we'll always be able to uh, remember them too, and uh, so we we certainly miss them. I know the family does. But great memories, Amen. great memories, good man. All right, um, well, Brother David, you come on now, and uh, uh, feel free to preach what the Lord's put on your heart. Uh, it's homecoming. We're not on a time schedule, so you just you just do whatever you want to do. Minutes early. I will say this. My daddy told me if you can't say what you need to say in 15, 20 minutes, you need to rethink your communication skills. That's right. <laughs> That's just what my daddy told me. And why don't you go by that? I do. Ask for 20, 25 minutes. I will ask you, does anybody see my Bible? Where's my sword? Reverend Jack Miller told me when 
I started preaching. He said, I want to give you one word of advice. I said, what's that, Brother Jack? He said, if you can't strike oil in 20 minutes, stop boring. <laughs> so I'll just follow the Lord. Sometimes I do that, and, and sometimes it's longer. We just follow the Lord and let the Lord take care of things. I told him I'm in the pulpit 15 minutes early because I usually don't get in the pulpit until about 11.30. <laughs> but it's good to be with you. It's a great homecoming. I believe, and I'm in 45 different churches in the Ash Baptist Association, and I'm in several other churches of other denominations. But this is the best music talent I have heard in a long time coming from the piano and organ and electric and the young man and just, uh, I tell you, guitar and just so much talent that God has blessed us with today. Amen. I am thankful to be here. And in honor of all this singing, I asked Brother Wade if I could sing, and he told me to go sing on a hill far away. So <laughs> uh, it is a joy just to be with you. If you love the Lord, say Amen. amen. How many Bibles do we have? Let's hold them up. Hold them up real high. Wade's got his now. Let's check them at the devil. I'm going to put him away. We don't need the old devil. And that's how you defeat him is through the Word of God. That's how Jesus defeated him. That's how we defeat him as well. I appreciate this church and what it stands for. I appreciate your friendship and your love. It's just like coming home for me. And uh, I want to share with you for just a few minutes this morning. You will turn to John chapter 10. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Once you have found your place, if you're able, and if you're not, that's fine, but if you're able, may we stand together in reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord. You may read along silently as I'll read out loud from John chapter 10, breaking in at the 26th verse. But you believe not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. For my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. We're honored to have a previous pastor here today. Amen. And I'd like to ask him if he would to lead us in our scripture prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we're grateful to you for this homecoming. And for all of those who have come together to participate and bless our hearts with songs and praises unto you. And Father, now we are grateful for the word that is about to be brought to us, and we pray that your Holy Spirit will lead us and guide and direct and teach us. Live so far that we might rejoice in the sweetness of heaven. Yes. And know that the great joy that await us. Amen. You may be seated. I want to ask you a question this morning. And I'm going to ask this group, this group, and this group. When was the last time that God talked to you? Now you think about that for a minute. And I asked this group over here, when was the last time God talked to you? And for this group, when was the last time that God talked to you? God wants to talk to you. Do you listen for God? 
1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Know you not that you are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. When you accepted Christ as your Savior, He took residence within you. Amen. And His Spirit wants to speak to you. He wants to speak very clearly in that small, audible voice. By studying the Bible, we hear Him speak to us. Sometimes when people preach, when people sing, when people write songs, when people do the Sunday school lesson, God speaks. When Lynn and I was in Israel two years ago, we went to a place that you're familiar with called the Shepherd's Field. It's right before you go into Jerusalem. And that's where the shepherds came by night and they waited for Jesus' birth, and they went in. You know that story. Israel is just a desert. There's certain areas of grass and water, and Shepherd's Field is one of those places where there's grass and water. And there were hundreds of sheep and lots of, of shepherds there at the Shepherd's Field. And I thought, well, how in the world are they going to separate all those sheep? And in a few minutes, one of the shepherds, boys said, come on guys, let's go. They raised up their head, they turned toward him, and they followed him out of there. The sheep knew who the shepherd was and knew his voice and followed him. I think there's a lesson there for us. We need to know the shepherd and we need to follow him. So are you one of Jesus' sheep? That's a question for you this morning. And do you follow him? And do you know his voice? I know Nathan, when he writes music, God speaks to him and, and he writes it down. And he speaks to all of us. He's, he spoke to people in the Old Testament, people in the New Testament. He still speaks to people today more than ever before through the Holy Spirit that indwells us. But when was the last time God spoke to you? I want to share a, a quick passage before we, we get into the rest of this sermon from Hosea chapter 3, you may or may not want to turn there, just verses 1 and 2. It's the story of Gomer and Hosea. Now, Hosea was the Billy Graham of that time. He was the leader in the country trying to bring Israel back into the works of Christ and the works of God. And this is what God said to him in verse 1. The Lord said unto him, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord, toward the children of Israel, who took to other gods and loved flagons of wine. So I bought her for 15 pieces of silver, for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. Now, I had read this passage, but God had never spoke to me about that until recently. Don't you know that Hosea had a little talk with God about that situation? A godly man, and God comes to him and says, I want you to marry the worst woman in the community. So there was some communication going on. And verse 2 says, I mean, this woman, she loved wine. She worshipped other gods. She was an adulteress, as bad as it could be. But he did what the Lord said. He says, so I bought her for 15 pieces of silver and a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. Now, the price for a woman was 30 pieces of silver. But he only paid 15. That's all he had. He didn't have any more. But he had some barley. Six bushels of barley is a homer, six and a half. And God said to me, that's what I did for you. I gave my only son for you. 
So you see how God speaks to us? It's not like you think sometimes. But one of the key pieces is looking into the Word, and, and we want to look into that. In verse 27, one of the first things we want to look at is, what does God say when He speaks? John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Isn't that good that he knows you? He knows your voice, and you know his. There's a song it's, that says, I know him, but best of all, he knows me. Jesus' sheep hear him. They know his voice. They follow him, and we receive eternal life because we do. Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He speaks through his word. I challenge you. Read this word. I challenge you. Spend time in the word. And let God talk to you about it. People say, well, my goal is to read through the Bible this year. That's great, and I applaud that, and I want you to read through the Bible every year. But it's not how many times you've been through the Bible. It's how many times the Bible's been through you. Amen. Take just a little bit and let God talk to you about what it says. Take your time. Let it speak to you. Meditate upon it. And sometimes, do as Nathan says, I jotted it down at work. Jot it down when God speaks to you. I have a pad in my bedroom. Sometimes I wake up at night with a thought on my mind. I jot it down before the devil steals it. When the preacher preaches, you might want to jot it down to Sunday school teachers or even singing at the Grove. I heard tremendous singing at the Grove Church in Georgia. And I thought, man, I can make a sermon out of all that music. I didn't have a pencil. I couldn't write it down, and, and the devil stole it all away. I went to a meeting the other day, and this lady was teaching, and she's talking about writing notes, and she said, you know, I have a waterproof notepad in my shower, and when the Lord speaks to me, I write it down in the shower. I thought, I'm just not going there, you know. <laughs> That's just a little much. But I do have one in the bedroom. Jot it down. It won't hurt you. Put it in the corner of your Bible. Write it on a piece of paper. Record it so that you can come back and get it again to see what God is saying to you. Don't let the devil steal it. It's called the living word, and it is the living word because it lives. You read it yesterday and you didn't see it, but you read it today and His Holy Spirit speaks to you about something. Luke 9, 23 is a great passage that says, Unto them all, if any man will come after him, let him deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and come follow me. That means you take time for God. That's what that means. To have a quiet time of a morning, to read some scripture, to have some prayer, and even write it down. In my office, I have a journal dedicated to my prayer time with requests on one side, answers on the other, and dates so that I can go back every day and see if God answered the prayer. So what does God's Word say? Secondly, what does God's Word mean in verse 28? He said unto them, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my Father's hand. In the Greek, when you look at the word never, it's a double negative. For all you English teachers out there, I'm sorry. I know you're not supposed to use a double negative. But the Greek does, and here it's saying you will never, never perish. You're his. And how do I know that? Because the word says it. Amen. That's what it says. That's what it means. Listen to him. It's not what I say. It's what the word of God says. It's what God says. Listen to him right where you are and where are you. You can be at church. You can be at home. You can be at Walmart. You can be up on the hill. 
God would speak to you just, just like that, just like at work, as Nathan would say it. That song came to me, and I started writing it down. And that happens. God speaks to us. There is no plan B. It is God talking to you that is plan A. That's it. Look at the facts and search for the truth. There's a lesson to be learned. There's a principle to be learned. I learned about jealousy and envy in Sunday school. This morning I thought, where in the world are they going to go with that? I don't see a lot of scripture. But before we got through, there was a lot of scripture talking about jealousy and envy. God speaks to us all the time if we'll just listen. What does it mean? Well, it could be something special. I had the privilege to judge a chili contest. Midway Baptist Church called me and said, we want you to judge a chili contest. I never judged a chili contest. I said, okay. I'll be there. I went there. I did not dress as I do today. I had a plaid shirt, blue jeans, and cowboy boots on. What I wear when I go to Happy Trails Cowboy Church. Because I didn't want to get chilly on my white shirt and on the suit. And you all know how I dress. I'm calm this morning, disappointed Wade. I didn't have my yellow on. But spring's over, you know. And we judged... And Neil Hatfield had called me a couple of days before and he said, I'm going to Christian Unity to preach revival. Tell me about the church so I'll know more effectively how to pray and how to preach. So I told him about the church, told him their history. I told Linda, I said, as soon as the chili contest is over, we're going over to Christian Unity. Well, there were three of us judging. There were nine pots of chili. You had to judge the taste and the color and the flavor and all that sort of stuff. When we got through, and we couldn't talk to each other, put it all on paper. When we got through, it was a tie between number one and number three. And then nine pots of chili. They said, what are we going to do? I said, no problem. Let me go down here and look at the chili. Went down through there. Number one had a half a pot. And number three had was completely empty. See, people could buy chili for $5 get a dessert and drink, and the money went to the young people. I went back. I said, number three is completely empty. We'll go with number three is first and number one is second. And we did. And so I looked at my watch, and it was five to seven. I thought, there's no way I can go home and change clothes. I'm going to have to go in blue jeans. Well, I've been to church in blue jeans before, but I usually don't because I'm a minister. So I go in, I told Linda, we'll sit in the back of the church. Nobody will never know. <laughs> and as soon as I go in, Neil Hatfield stretches his arm out and says, Brother David. So I have to go up and hug him and tell him it's good to see him and everybody looking at me in my plaid shirt and blue jeans. And I said, well, I'll just, now hang with me. There's an end to this. So I go to the back of the church and sit down. I said, well, that's it. You know, they won't nobody see me now. I'm good. And at the end of the service, the preacher said, Brother David, we'd like for you to come and stand in the altar. In case someone wants to come, you can pray with them. So me and my blue jeans and plaid shirt and cowboy boots go stand in the altar. A little lady over here I thought was about 17 or 18, found out she was 22 with three children, came to me and she said, I don't know if I'm saved. And she was just crying her eyes out. And this is what I want you to learn. God spoke to her that night. And I said, you know, 1 John 5, 11 and 12 says, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. This life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And verse 13 says, these things I write unto you that you may know. And I said, Romans 10, 13 says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. She quit crying. And she looked at me in the eyes, and I said, do you know him? She said, no, but I want to. And we prayed. She accepted the Lord that night. 
And it doesn't matter if you've got cowboy boots or blue jeans or a plaid shirt or a suit, or whatever you women wear, whatever you men wear, it's what's in your heart. Amen. It's what's in your heart. So you wear anything you want to as long as it glorifies the Lord. And you share scripture with people so it will speak to others. God's word has so much in it. Sometimes it's, it's a warning, like in Proverbs 22, 25. It's an alert. Don't associate with men of anger. At my age, I don't hang around angry people. Uh, you know, when you get 71, uh, you don't fight like you used to. So I get away from angry people. I, I don't like that. The Bible teaches us to follow. Matthew 4, 19 says, Come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. His word is always speaking to us, giving us commandments. There are ten commandments in the Old, Old Testament. There's a thousand and fifty in the New Testament. There are commands for us to follow. Romans 16, 17, avoid troublemakers. That one's for me. I'm around trouble all the time. I have to deal with it. And me and the Lord usually try to take care of it. The Bible talks about truth, 1 John 3, 18. Love not in word, but in deed and in truth. 1 Thessalonians 5, 22, avoid all appearance of evil. So God speaks to us through his word. But will you listen? You say, well, I knew all that stuff. Well, I used to think I knew it all, and then I got married. I'm here to tell you, you don't know it all, and I don't know it all either. There's a lot to learn until the day you die in the Word of God. So, what does the Word say? What does it mean? And lastly, what does it mean to me? Verse 29. My Father which gave them me is greater than them all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. You couldn't lose yourself if you wanted to. You didn't save yourself. You can't lose yourself. God saved you. God's got you. His word says it. I believe it. That ends it for me. When his word says it, that's it. An application to self. There's chronological time, 60 minutes and an hour, 24 hours in a day, and then there's God's time. Moses, 80 years old, and he led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Abraham was 100. Sarah was 90 when Isaac was born. Don't tell me that your age hinders you from serving the Lord. I don't care if you're a young person or you're like me. You're drawing Social Security and you're mature. You're either young or mature. Don't use that other word. You got work to do. Scientists tell us the human body is supposed to last 125 years. What are you waiting on? What am I waiting on? What does it mean? It does little good to read the Bible if you don't apply it and apply it to yourself. When I read the Word and say, boy, here's a good word for Wade. I got to call and tell him. You know, it's a good word for Nathan. I need to call and tell him. That's not the way it works. When you read the word, it applies to David. And when you read the word, it applies to you. I get calls at the office all the time. People will say, God has told me to tell you to call so-and-so and tell them. And I say, hold it. God didn't tell me anything about that. God talks to us as an individual. How does it apply to me? What's he saying to me, not to someone else? So the one thing he says is, am I his sheep? We close this morning. So we go back. When was the last time God spoke to you? When was the last time God spoke to you? When was the last time God spoke to you? Was it this morning? Yesterday? Last week? He spoke to you when you got uh, saved. He spoke to because you, you sung about it this morning. And that song he just wrote, God saved him and he's on his way. God spoke to him. 
When you were baptized, you said, oh, Lord, please don't let me drown. And God said, don't worry, you're safe. You remember? You remember? When you got married, I hope that you talked to God and God talked to you. When was the last time God talked to you? Is he talking to you this morning? Will we be obedient? Will we follow him? It might mean we need to become a Christian. Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It might be that you need to be baptized. You might be being called to preach. You might be being called to visit your neighbor and have a cup of coffee. What's God asking you to do this morning? The invitation could be that if you're not in Sunday school, God's saying to you this morning, you need to be in Sunday school. God could be saying to you, get in a special study and learn of me. God could be saying to you, you need to become a disciple maker. To be someone who will share with another so that they can share with another, and that they can share with another your story. Every one of you have a story. People need to hear it. Dexter's told me about his heart procedure. I had the same thing. And he talked to me when I had mine, and I've talked to him since he had his. And he's a wild man, in case you all don't know it, because his heart's good. Just watch him here in a few minutes. You'll see it over there in fellowship hall. But I'm here to tell you, if God's speaking to you this morning, we'd love to hear about it. In just a minute, Brother Wade's going to come to the, to the altar. You're going to have the opportunity to come. You can come and kneel, pray by yourself, come and stand in the altar, come and sit on the front pew and, and pray. I'll pray with you. Neil, uh, Wade will pray with you. Others will pray with you here. But if God's talking to you, this is your time. This is your time to say, as these young people did, yes, Lord, yes. Yes, Lord, yes. Will you follow him because he's talking to you? With every head bowed and every eye closed, ask Brother Wade if he will to come to the altar. Ask our musician if they will to get ready to play a hymn of invitation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your spirit we felt today. We thank you for your love and your goodness. I pray for those who need to respond this morning. Father, if you're talking to them, Lord, give them the strength to step up and to come forward. And Lord, to talk to you and to share with us what's going on in their world because you are alive and well and speaking to them today. And they recognize it. Most of all, Father, if there's one here not a Christian, I pray that they will come and accept you as Lord and Savior. Christian that's burdened down, come and leave that burden at the foot of the cross. Lord, have your way and we'll give you the praise for it all. For it's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. May we stand together. Stand together, you respond as the Lord and the Holy Spirit did. Well, for God talking to you, we invite you to come. You're the one that knows it. We invite you to come. Time. You need to come.
in my heart that there's someone here today that uh, really needs to maybe come back to the Lord. Maybe make a decision. Maybe get in or out. Head bowed and eyes closed. I'm just going to ask that no one look around. Spirit, we can respect the privacy of others because this is the time of time it's between you and God. like for me just to simply pray tonight, pray for you tonight. I won't contact you or anything like that. I'll let you do that. If you'd like for me to be praying on the decision that you need to make, then you just lift your hand. That's it. There's a couple, and I realize feel free. I think something I've done in the past, maybe I've not made enough to come to the altar. Maybe I feel convicted of that. This is a wonderful, beautiful place to be. There's still time to respond. If you need to be at this altar, Thank you, Brother David, for that word. Uh, let me let me get up here so the folks across the street can hear me. Because they've been over there saying, I wish they'd hurry up. It's hard to keep this food hot. <laughs> and uh, so we'll be over there in just a minute. Um, we're going to go ahead and say the blessing over here. So we can bless the food, and uh, again, we invite everybody to join with us and enjoy this fellowship uh, that we have, and and the beans and the meat and all that good stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, cheesecake, which I know there's at least one. So yes, I'll be in the back, and no, you better not eat it all. Save me a crumble of cheesecake, okay? All right. Any any words need to be said? Anybody got anything they need to say? We'll dismiss and we'll pray. Just make your way over there and uh, feel free to go ahead and, and get started, get the line, keep it moving. <laughs> and I'll be there shortly. <laughs> All right. Mine's heart's clear. Brother Nathan, thank you again for coming and providing that music. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, beautiful words that God gives you. Praise team, the choir, Brother David, everybody. It's been a good day in the Lord. Anybody else get used to spending two hours in church instead of an hour and 15 minutes? Should I plan next week for a little longer? Not really. Not really? Okay. All right. This special occasion. All right. Let's pray, um, and then we're going to be dismissed, and, and uh, we can start go over the, that way. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day for this beautiful service. Lord, as we've come, and Sister Janie began to talk about some times gone past. You Look at these windows. 
and I think of the, the men and the women and the children and, and, and the kinfolk they have over the generations that, that stood where we're at and, and, and even in the old church down the road, Lord, that, that, that they just kept it going. Now we've got a responsibility. Lord, thank you for our beautiful church. Thank you for our beautiful fellowship that we have inside this church. Thank you for the brothers and sisters that we have. God, I pray that you'll light a fire in our hearts that we get out and knock on doors and we get out and we see people. We get out and invite people and tell people our story until you return. Bless the food that we're going to have. Bless those who prepared it. Every dish that was brought, God, we pray that the blessing will follow them home. And the homes will be blessed. And I pray, God, that you bless this food to nurse for our bodies. And bless the beautiful fellowship we'll have. We love you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight. Today.